Diffuse correlation spectroscopy, or DCS, is an optical technology used to measure blood flow and is typically applied for neuromonitoring. In DCS, a laser in the near-infrared light range is used to shine light into the head from the surface of the scalp. The light gets scattered many times, going down into the brain tissue, and some of this light will scatter back upward out of the scalp again. When we measure the backscattered light a few centimeters from the laser source, we're able to observe a laser speckle pattern. One to several of these speckles are sampled with a single photon detector and the temporal autocorrelation of the detected light intensity is taken. This correlation has an exponential decay, and the rate of this decay can be used to recover tissue blood flow. In other words, faster and slower decays imply faster or slower hemodynamics, respectively. DCS has been around for the last 30 years, but it is an extension of an older technique termed diffusing wave spectroscopy. This technique has been used by physicists and chemists to recover the properties of particles in solution. Here, a laser is shown into a sample undetected onto the other side. And here I show two photon or light paths for visualization. The black dots along the path are dynamic scatters undergoing Brownian motion, which is a random walk process described by the following distribution. Essentially, the particle position at a point in time can be modeled by a normal distribution centered around its previous position, with its mean square displacement described by a parameter called the diffusion coefficient, or dB, which is ultimately our recovered quantity of interest. Here I show the electric field expression for a single photon path. We have terms describing the amplitude, the fast temporal fluctuation, the static phase term, and the time-dependent phase accumulation, which is what gives us the signal we are measuring. By taking the autocorrelation of this, the derivation details of which are not shown here, we see that it decays exponentially with a rate proportional to the diffusion coefficient. The total electric field is simply the summation of fields from all paths and the total autocorrelation contains the same exponential decay, this time weighted by a probability distribution of photon path lengths. Our quantity of interest is still in the exponential decay rate. Now, DCS is simply the same concept with the light backscattered through human tissue. Here I show a single photon path and we can see it scatters randomly throughout the tissue before being detected. We have our photon path, red blood cells, and static or unmoving scatterers. In reality, many photons will have traversed paths such as these. For simple visualization, I depict multiple photon paths as parabolic trajectories, called the photon path length distribution. This distribution is dependent on the tissue sample of interest source and detector positioning, as well as tissue optical properties. Here, the red blood cells are moving according to shear-induced Brownian motion. By the time a light path reaches the detector, its time-varying phase will have accumulated the motion fluctuations of all of the red blood cells that are scattered from. And the intensity fluctuations that we detect are representative of the speed of the movement of these red dots. Again, taking the autocorrelation of the signal allows us to recover essentially the red blood cell mean square displacement. Here is an overview of what an experiment using DCS has looked like in our lab so far. For a given subject, a fiber coupled to a laser was placed onto the subject forehead. A detector fiber coupled to one detector was placed one and a half centimeters away from the laser which will exclusively measure scalp blood flow. Another detector fiber coupled to another detector was placed four centimeters away from the laser, which will capture brain hemodynamics. The experimental procedure involved a functional activation path, which started with a 30 second control period, followed by a 50 second memory task, followed by a 30 second recovery. Memory tasks activate the prefrontal cortex, which increases blood flow to the area. 
This first figure shows the normalized blood flow time course during the resting state for an example subject. And here we can see the pulse clearly visible in both the orange and the blue curve, which measure the brain and the scalp respectively. The second figure shows the activation state. The orange and the blue curves are normalized against their respective values during the resting state. During the activation state, we see an increase in the brain flow while the scalp blood flow stays around the same as in the resting state, indicating increased neuroactivity during the memory task. We would like to state our references and acknowledge all of our collaborators who have contributed to this video.